guest disappearance. If you missed the previous episodes and you're interested in listening to them, I will have them in a playlist on the top of the screen so you can check it out right now. I will also have it in the description box down below if you're interested. Again, this is a true crime ASMR video and it is whispered. If you don't care for ASMR videos, then you probably have to keep looking for a different kind of a documentary style thing for Haley Cummings' disappearance. I, um, I think up until this point we can all agree that, you know, Ronald, Haley's dad, and Misty, his girlfriend, they're not the most standard, and I don't, I mean, I don't want to patronize or anything, but they're not the people that we thought they were at the beginning of this investigation, when the police started, when they, when Haley was reported missing. I think we can all agree that they have a criminal background. I think that they you know, they're the kind of people that may not be the most educated one. And I'm not talking about going to college. I'm talking about, you know, just basic things, common sense, that kind of thing. That if you watch my last video, we talk about how he, you know, put a gun in his mouth in front of uh, somebody who was trying, you know, who was the head of the search of Haley's, you know, search party organization so he was being investigated for abusing his child or you know having guns around in the house unlocked with you know the bullets by them they're just people that will make you wonder you know I think that's how much we can state up until this point we're almost done with this series so a lot is going to happen in the next two videos I think it's going to open our eyes to other possibilities that we may have not thought about up until this point. But, uh, I think, you know, again, this is not your standard family who lost a child. They got married uh, a month after Haley was missing and they said that that's what Haley would have wanted, which didn't make sense, but it would make sense legally for it to defense in case that, you know, somebody wanted to testify against each other. In this case, Ronald and Misty, then they divorced. They, they you know, Ronald went to jail for different um, problems that he had with Misty's family. The media, I mean, them going to different programs and honestly, in my opinion, you know, not being very coherent or making sense in the interviews, but they were gladly accepting the money that they were getting out of all this that happened after Haley disappeared. So, I think that we can all agree that for some reason they're covering each other. They probably have dirt on each other. And whatever happened to Haley, I don't think it was Misty's fault, but I do know or I do think, I should say, um, that uh, she probably knows more than she is telling the police or anybody until this point, because she's going to change her story in this video. So, um, you now in this one in particular, we're going to cover how she changed her story, how her brother changed his story, how her brother, Tom, himself in the house when at first he said that he went and knocked and nobody answered so he left we're gonna go through who got arrested why got arrested and all those details now in august the police released a statement that said that you know they just don't believe that this was done by a stranger i'm sure they have a more technical way of saying that but uh that's basically what the police, you know, at first they they were thinking that she was abducted by a stranger, but after the investigation, and I'm sure a lot more tips and proof that they have, and they're not going to release. 
these two, you know, because it might hurt their case. They know and they know in this point that at this point that uh, you know she wasn't taken by by a stranger. Now remember that Misty and Ronald uh, were getting the divorce, so they get divorced. But something weird happens, <laughs> which it's weird for me, anyways. They remain good good friends. Uh, I don't understand why would they get. I mean, they were very very close after the divorce. There are a lot of things that happen, you know, even incidents that were reported to the police when and they were together. They were always together. Uh, there was this incident. Uh, I don't. I didn't write down the guy's name, but uh, it was reported to the police uh, that Ronald tried to run, uh, run off the road. This uh, guy, because he was getting closer to Misty. Now, this is public record. I mean, he got charged for that. Uh, but just so you know, you know, he he was not. He was not only spending a lot of time with Misty. But he was also making sure that Misty didn't get any new boyfriend or, you know, male kind of company. And so that's weird, don't you think? I mean, usually, I don't know, I, I, I never went through a divorce and I hope I never have to, but I don't, I don't think you like each other by the time that you're getting a divorce. I don't think you like each other that much. I think that when you decide to get a divorce, it's probably because you need to stay away from each other, because you're not healthy for each other, because you don't get along, because, you know, there's many, many reasons, but I think that the cases where people remain that close of friends, like we see each other every day, we do stuff together, we're seen in the same car, in the, in the same car together, I, I don't think it's pretty normal, so just keep that in mind. Okay. But before the one year anniversary of Haley's disappearance, just before, you know, a few weeks before, um, a few arrests are made. Now, these arrests include Misty, Ronald, Ronald's cousin, and a couple other people that were involved were just Tommy and Donna. Donna was a friend of Misty. Now, Donna was also part of the search efforts, or she was part of that organization that was looking for Haley. And she actually was fired from that organization because she started to be, become close to Misty, and they were just apparently they were doing drugs or something and uh, you know as soon as they, the organization they found out that she was doing that she got fired so Donna is Misty's friend you know Misty Ronald uh, his cousin which is a girl and uh, Tommy uh, were the ones that were arrested and well now you probably wonder how they got arrested why they got arrested if anything you know the police got any clues or anything like that but no they actually got caught on video selling three thousand dollars three thousand nine hundred dollars on some kind of a painkiller now uh, or painkillers i guess those are just the kind of drugs you know that uh, they were selling and they totaled that amount now uh, the police said that even though you know this was a complete separate investigation that they thought that these were some kind of parallel cases that you know in, in one case the, uh, there was this officer who was saying that there was no doubt in his mind these cases will cross someday path. The police also hope that uh, because they are facing over 10 years of prison that maybe one of them will tell the truth and help them find Haley or find out what truly happened to Haley. Now the videos were released to the media and even, I mean, you can hear what they were saying, what they were doing. Um, Ronald 
PTSD had then. So I think that she did whatever she thought it was right to get money, whatever she thought it was right to survive. You know, I think it just comes down to that, you know, learn to survive in whatever life throws at you. Now, is that an excuse to be a criminal? No. She should pay for what she did. But I'm just saying that it's not like she had choices. Like, she didn't know. I don't think she knew that she had other choices. I don't think. I think it's just one with the flow how life was developing for her. And uh, it put her in this very bad situation. I also think that most of the transaction, and this is my opinion, were done by Misty because she was the minor back then. And even though, you know, she was processed and she got 25 years, maybe they thought, you know, well, hey, Misty, you do this because, you know, if we ever get caught, you're not going to be punished as bad if we do it. Or maybe, you know, I don't, I don't think that she was pocketing the money. Maybe these people are just drug addicts themselves, you know, Misty and Ronald, so they might just have been selling the drugs to buy for them. And, you know, we, we don't know that, but we can only assume that that was one of the reasons why, because they weren't just rich people, you know, they weren't like, okay, they were dealing drugs and they had a mansion and they had a, a Ferrari and they had, or, or they had nice cars or anything like that. I mean, they were living in a very precarious way. They weren't flaunting what they had or they even, you know, this was in a good situation. They were doing this that was very dangerous and they were living exactly the same way that they used to before. I think they were just feeding themselves with drugs and uh, surviving up until this point. Now, when they got um, arrested and they got their sentencing, the story of what happened the night that Haley disappeared changed. And I'm gonna go over some of the things specific things that change in Misty and also Tommy's, which is her brother, Theory. It is just overcomplicating things, I think, but we just have to understand why. And also, I'll talk about one more person that according to Misty and Tommy was there at the night that Haley disappeared. Um, I also heard in, you know, the previous statements that in different videos that, yeah, I mean, before Haley disappeared and before um, Misty went to bed, apparently Tommy was there and this cousin was there, Joe, but it wasn't confirmed because then she said that she was by herself. So let's talk about this other thing that now they claim this story is what actually happened that night, okay? Uh, Misty and Tommy, they had a cousin. His name was, was Joe Overstreet, okay? He was visiting from Nashville, Tennessee. Of course, they were in Florida at the time, but he was visiting the area. Apparently, this John was staying with Timmy, another of Misty's brothers, not Tommy, Timmy, and his wife, okay? His wife's name is Heather. They had a van, and, you know, they, they, they had a house, and they lived separate, you know, from, or not really close to <coughs> uh, Ronald's house. Now, I'm just kind of setting theory for you, okay, and uh, the new story for you, so, again, Joe was a cousin, he was visiting from Tennessee, and he was staying with Timmy, um, you know, another brother of Misty, and I'm sorry, the wife not was not Heather, it was Chelsea, okay, my bad, sorry, uh, when Misty and Tommy got arrested and 
sentenced, they started to place this guy in, you know, at the night of Haley's disappearance. They both claim, okay, according to their lawyers, and that's what I heard it from, you know, it was their lawyers, not their own mouth. I didn't hear Misty talking about her or Tommy, but according to their lawyers, what happened that night was that Misty was sleeping already. She was in bed. And Joe, the cousin, got in the house, took Haley, and left. Why do you want, why do you think he did it? Well, according to Tommy, who was apparently there at the time as well, I don't understand how they came up with this theory because, you know, the idea is that Tommy declared this exact same thing that I'm telling you, okay? That Misty was saying. Apparently, uh, Joe got in the house and was looking for a gun that Ronald had. Remember that Ronald has a fascination with guns and the, he had a lot of them. But apparently, Joe was looking for a specific one. He couldn't find it. And that is why he took Haley. So according to Tommy and Misty, this guy came to the house, looked for the gun, couldn't find it. And because of that, he took Haley. And, and I have to add this, according to this news story, Misty was hiding under the covers, you know, the, the, the blankets in his bed, in her bed with uh, Ronald Jr. when this happened. I have a lot of problems with this theory and I'll go through what I think it's kind of out there, but before I do that, um, you know, when all this came out, you know, Chelsea, um, Timmy's wife, she mentioned that, um, you know, Joe was staying with them that night, but he could have gotten the van, the white van that they have, you know, drive there and, um, come back and, you know, maybe they didn't even notice. She also said that she did notice that the van was in a different place, parked differently that night. Um, but, you know, it was just like, okay, everyone is now kind of pointing to this Joe guy. Um, apparently, in what I've heard in different interviews, Misty's family was always suspicious of Joe because... Misty claims that she was abused, sexually abused by this guy, okay? So Misty family kind of um, went all over the place talking about how this guy is a sexual predator that is a child molester and that, you know, he's basically a, I mean, a bad guy. No, okay, I'm trying to build this case for them. Okay, the family thinks he's a child molester. Misty and Tommy are saying that he visited the, you know, the house and took Haley for that reason. Timmy is saying that his van could have been taken. I mean, Chelsea, the wife, said that the van could have been taken and that she actually even noticed his scratch that wasn't in the van, you know, the day before. And the claims that he was a child molester and everything. Now, to, on this guy's defense, even though I do think he's, you know, involved in some kind of criminal activity and he's no saint, there is no record. He wasn't in some kind of a sexual predator list or, I mean, um, if he did um, rape or molest or something to miss him, the parents didn't care to report it to the police at the time. Or, you know, it just wasn't as bad as Misty is saying right now. Okay. This is, this is really frustrating. Think about it. Okay, you have a cousin that he is not the best person in the world. You know he's not. So you open the door of your house to let him stay with you. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't care if I have kids or not. If I believe the 
sister, you're not staying with me, okay? You want to visit Florida? Go get a motel. Do something about it, but I'm not going to open the, the doors of my house for a sex for a, a sex burglar. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. If they were so scared of this guy. Another thing.
that you want to cover for this joke guy. You hate the guy. You hate his guts. Why would you? Do you know what I mean? Oh, I just feel like these people, they, they, they just don't make sense. They're covering something, but I just hope, I just hope that the police can figure out what, what they're covering. I don't it really was taken that night by this Joe guy. I don't understand the door open with the bricks at the back door that they claimed that was like that that night. I don't understand the need for covering. Okay, why would Misty want to cover this guy? Why would Ronald want to cover this guy? It makes you think, okay, if this in fact was true, maybe he did take Haley. But maybe Ronald gave Haley to the guy. Maybe they had some kind of trouble. And we all know the kind of dad uh, Ronald's been up until this point in the lives of the kids. So, I mean, could have been him taking Haley because of some kind of disagreement. It could have, but I, I, I don't think that's the case. I, I, I think that um, it could have been some kind of arrangement where Ronald gave willingly Haley to the guy. And they were kind of careful to not leave Trace behind, and that's why they claimed that she was abducted. Yeah, that is a possibility. Why? I am not sure. You know, maybe Ronald was in some kind of deep trouble. Maybe he owed people. Maybe he he needed to pay for something. Or maybe this is a made-up story, which that would make perfect sense. Um, I I was talking to somebody or a few people the other day on the comments, and I was telling them that I wish that you know the police cut a deal for Misty. That is so irresistible that she actually tells the truth, you know, that she actually says what actually happened. I don't know if what actually happened, but what she knows about what could have happened and then the police can fill in the blanks. It's a sad situation. It is. Because we're trying to understand all these clowns, in my opinion, I'm sorry, but the, we're trying to understand these people that have no common sense and uh, no, I don't know, it's just, uh, it doesn't even come down to education, it comes down to being a decent human being. I mean, I can't find a decent human being. Right now, I d it breaks my heart to think that there is people out there who have kids and they behave this way. It just breaks my heart. I have a soft spot for kids. I just feel like they, in most cases, you know, they live this kind of life and then they're kind of tied to it, you know, like I think about Misty. She was raised this way, and she, that's what, all she knew, and that's why she kept doing what she was doing, or what is she, she is doing. I just hope that one day we can find the perfect, and I'm saying yes, the perfect system for kids, where we can actually protect them from this kind of um, situations where they're in danger where they're living in a, a life, or they're living with people that don't have the best, you know, they're not looking for their best interest, or the kids' best interest but themselves. I hope that one day, you know, we can come up with some kind of laws or something, or ways to screen these people that have these problems. 
sometimes and help them because I don't think you know, should throw them in jail because if they have a drug problem I think that they need help they truly need help and, uh, and maybe in the future they can be good parents to their kids but in the meantime I don't think kids should be exposed to this kind of criminal behavior it, it's, it's just sad and it makes me really really sad to know that she was living in this situation you know in a small trailer home with not much but that's okay but you can grow with with not much and be a great person <laughs> but you know and, and on top of that just have the grown ups around you not care enough about you you know I don't think that you should have guns unlocked with bullets I don't think you should hit your kids out being stated that, you know, Ronald was hitting the kids, and uh, there are several different accusations of him doing, you know, like, it's like this guy thought that he was excluded, you know, from the law, like the laws didn't apply to him, and he did whatever he wanted to those kids, treat them whatever, you know, however he wanted to treat them, and, uh, and then this happens, and then this becomes a big theory. This guy has no brain. How can he get away with it? How, how can he not be paid for whatever happened to Haley? Even if somebody took her because of his, you know, criminal activity, whatever. How can we just not find out? Or how can we just not know? How did he do it? There is no perfect crime, in my opinion. So how can this guy with no brain get away with it? it just, I'm not saying that a, you know a smart person should get away with it, but I'm just saying that you know there's a lot of quote unquote really smart people who decided to be serial killers, which is something that we're gonna go through in other videos, but. just very meticulous and and they got caught and I'm happy that they did but I'm just saying this guy with no brain how can he just not how can they just break him make him talk how can they just not break a 17 year old girl I'm not saying the police is not doing their job but I'm just saying I'm just trying to understand in my mind how can they how can these people get away with it it breaks my heart and even though I hope that Haley is happy whatever she is um, you know I'm hoping that she's not suffering today I'm hoping that she's you know better than what she was before whatever she is right now I just feel that the people need to know what actually happened, even if the family don't care. I feel like the police needs to find out what actually happened. And there is a lot more evidence that I'm going to share with you in the next video. And uh, that it's going to kind of wrap up the series and I'll tell you what I think happened to her. Am I 100% sure? No, of course not. It's just my theory. 